Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. So a couple days ago, I put out a video where I was talking about me setting up this corn patch in a raised bed. And it's really not hard to do. Uh, if you already got raised beds, I highly recommend it. Uh, corn is really kind of fun to grow and very productive. But now it's time to thin these back and put the mulch back on. And I've got a few things I want to talk about uh, in in my bed that might be beneficial for you guys if you are kind of playing along here and, and doing the same thing. So I'm gonna bring you guys in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So excuse the windy day today. First thing I wanna mention is I've got a few that never popped up. So one there, that didn't pop up. Uh, one over here didn't pop up and then another one died. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it didn't get enough water. I'm not sure, but it just shriveled up and died. And then I've got another one missing, I think, right, right there. Another one there and another one there. And so there's quite a few missing, but I still have enough that is still going to be able to produce well for me. Now with corn, because it's a wind pollinator, you definitely need a whole lot together. And that's why I've got this kind of grid pattern. I'm not doing it in rows because I don't have a very large space to be able to grow a lot. But for most of us, having this many plants is more than enough to be able to produce corn kind of for your family. I mean, you don't really need acres and acres of corn uh, for just your family. You need a couple ears and uh, this will produce for you. So this is plenty. And having a couple missing like this is not gonna affect the pollination too much. So the next thing I'm doing here is, um, as you can see, there's some of these holes that have two corn plants, some only one, and I put two uh, seeds per hole and some of them popped up with both and some did not. So now I got to go through and thin these out. So what you're going to want is a pair of sharp scissors. Uh, you could just pull them out. However, pulling them out risks damaging the, the roots of the other one that's right next to it. So I find it's best to clip them. Now one thing also I want to mention is when you got two, sometimes you got one that's small like right there, and one that's large, like right there. So you definitely, obviously, I think it's pretty obvious, you would wanna clip the one that's the smallest, the one that's not doing as well. This one, it's not as obvious which one is doing better. I think that one's doing better. They're both pretty close, so we're just gonna kinda pick one. And I'm gonna go through and do this with every single one. I've got all of them clipped. Now I want to mention that I'm leaving them in the ground because that's just keeping the nitrogen and all the, the nutrients in there and they will decay over time and really set back into the soil. So no harm, no foul. You're not pulling things out. I always like to keep things in the soil so that way we're not removing nutrients any more than we have to by harvesting what we want to harvest. At the point of me filming this video, these are 13 days old. So they're already pretty big for 13 days, but these do grow fast, especially if you have good amount of nutrients. And look at this, I missed one. There we go. So they will grow fast. Um, some of them are a little faster than others, like that one is nice and big and tall. Same with that one, yet got a couple smaller, more dainty ones. And that happens, they're not all gonna be perfect. Just different genetics in the same seed uh, can happen but they should be pretty uniform. And this is about the time that I'm gonna add some mulch. Now, you don't always have to add mulch, keep that in mind. But when you're growing in a raised bed, I find mulch is really beneficial. Uh, one thing is we're gonna be adding some depth up a little bit, so that's gonna keep these from blowing over. In heavy winds, these could get knocked out of their space. Later in the season, once these get a little bit taller, a lot of corn farmers will actually uh, poor nutrients, uh, granule fertilizers near the, the corn, and then do something called hilling, which is bringing the, the dirt up against it. Um, I'm just gonna put the mulch on top and that's gonna keep the soil moist and it's also, it's gonna do the same thing. So that's, we're gonna actually add a little bit of fertilizer at this moment as well, and then throw that mulch right back on top. And that's gonna have uh, a similar effect to hilling these that um, most 
corn farmers do. So that's gonna keep these more supported and it's also gonna allow those nutrients to start breaking down underneath that mulch. So you might ask, I mean, just 13 days ago, I added a whole lot of nutrients to this bed. Why are we adding more? Well, corn is a very heavy feeder. Plus the nutrients I'm adding, which is this here, it's a uh, chicken manure kind of fertilizer. Um, this takes a while to break down in the soil. So it's not readily available right away. And neither was the stuff that I added. I had a whole lot of granule fertilizers that are organic and they're gonna take a while to be broken down by that soil biome and be available to the corn. So we're now 13 days in and we're gonna add a little bit more. That other fertilizer is just now probably starting to have some effect in nutrients. You can see I'm just broadcasting it simply. There's no rhyme or reason for it. How I'm doing it, I'm just adding a little bit. It's not a ton. Maybe about five to 10 handfuls for this entire bed, which there's 50 something ears of corn in this bed. So that's not too much. These should be able to utilize all that nutrients and it's not gonna burn these plants. All right, so I had to put some gloves on because um, we've got a lot of nasty bugs here. We've got brown recluses and you know, a bunch of spiders and scorpions and stuff, and they love this kind of material, so I needed some gloves. These are my wife's, I couldn't find mine, and um, yeah, so we're gonna go kind of floral here, but whatever. Kind of grabbing it and putting it on. We wanna make sure we don't cover, especially the smaller uh, stands of these, so I'll show you kind of what we're doing. Well, there we go, we got the mulch on. We still have a little bit left, but I, I think this is pretty full. I added some compost on top when I first planted these. I'm probably gonna gather that up and put it in my wheelbarrow or in a five gallon bucket, and I can use that for another bed at one point. So now, normally I would water this in right away. However, we're calling for pretty heavy rain tonight, and I don't wanna overwater these plants. It's kinda nice not having to use water if you don't have to. Uh, water costs money. Uh, I don't wanna overuse it. So since it's gonna rain, there's just no need. And so now this is ready. When it rains tonight, that'll compact everything, keep it there. And you know what, if it rains and washes some of this away, I've got more that I can add. So we should be good. So there is what I did about two weeks in. We're, we're almost two weeks in, one day short. And that's about what I thought it would be. Um, we need a little bit of height here with these to be able to get the mulch in there to not cover them completely Now you can really see where the holes are right um, It's a little easier now that we've got a difference in color uh, darker Kind of mulch layer so you can really see where where those are missing, but that's okay So I'll bring you guys along in the next couple weeks and hopefully we should soon be seeing these start to grow very quickly and it says 75 days, so we're already 14 into it. So another little more than 60 days until we should be able to harvest, which is pretty crazy, so that's two months. And we've got until probably November before we start getting some really cold nights. So uh, we have plenty of time here. We've got August and September, should be fine. I'll be able to harvest at the end of September, and we should be able to get some good corn from this. So it is important though, if you're doing a fall planting even here in the south to do a quicker variety this is 75 days i've got a couple other corns that are you know 100 day and that just would that wouldn't be enough time um before november's you know frost that would kind of be cutting it short and might lose that harvest so it's important to do a a quicker variety like this all right i'll bring you guys back in a couple weeks thanks for watching everyone if you guys like this kind of content please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates also if you could hit the like button it would really help me and the channel out i will see you on the next video now you guys try to escape the daily grind